Hey guys, Thunder E here, and this is the video we've been waiting for, gaming on the Pixel line. And you're wondering, wait, why are we doing on the Pixel line? Well, simply put, I've got all three Pixel devices here, and they all have the same internal specs. Yes, well, similar specs, if you will. I've got the Pixel 9 right here. I've got the Pixel 9 Pro, and I've also got the Pixel 9 Pro XL. Now, all these devices are powered by the Tensor G4 processor, and we're gonna see how well it actually performs in terms of gaming. Now, before we get to that, let's take a look at just the hardware and design of all these devices. As you can see, they're very similar. And if we take a quick look at the Pixel 9 and the Pixel 9 Pro, same size, 6.3 inches. I really like the build this year from Google Pixel, very comfortable to hold. This is a small device that doesn't feel small and has a larger surface area. Now, the Pixel 9 has a display uh, with a maximum Nit brightness at 2700 nits, while the Pixel 9 Pro comes in at 3000 nits for maximum peak brightness there. Now the battery sizes are the same, about 4700 milliamps, and of course that Tensor G4 processor. Now when we move over to Pixel 9 Pro XL, this is a device that's more for me. I like larger phones and I like the larger size. I also like just that nice build overall. You've got of course Gorilla Glass Victus 2. You've got a larger display that's at 6.8 inches and maximum nit brightness of course is, is 3000 nits all three devices have 16 gigabytes of ram the display looks absolutely gorgeous you're looking at that wallpaper you see gojo gojo goku and then you realize that gojo might not be coming back because jjk is ending in five more chapters come on Gojo, please come back. But anyway, I digress. So this device has some very interesting specs here. So what do we have in terms of performance for the Tensor G4? Now looking at Geekbench 6 performance scores here, you can see of course our CPU scores um, as they relate to all the devices. They're all very similar in range here. Uh, but what you notice is that the scores are closer in line to the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 than something like the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3. So it's almost two generations behind. And if you look at that compared to, of course, the scores uh, of the Galaxy S24 uh, Ultra, you can see how much higher it is there. When we move with the GPU scores, it's the same thing as well. And even the GPU scores on the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 on the Galaxy S24 Ultra completely obliterates uh, the Tensor G4. So you're saying, can it game is the big question. Well. Let's just put this into perspective. Google has said this is not a device this builds necessary for gaming, but because I'm looking at those benchmarks and seeing that this is closer to the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1, it should be able to play the games we want to play. And some of those games are, of course, Call of Duty Mobile, Call of Duty Warzone, PUBG Mobile, and Genshin Impact. So now I'm gonna show you gaming from all three devices for each of the games. And then we'll talk about the kind of performance we're seeing here. So of course, uh, we'll go through from the Pixel 9, Pixel 9 Pro, and the Pixel 9 Pro XL, starting with Call of Duty Mobile and ending with Call of Duty Warzone.
try. So we can clearly see that this device can game. And when we start off with Call of Duty Mobile, the Pixel 9 Pro and Pro XL do a good job, 120 frames per second. While the Pixel 9, for whatever reason, with the same settings, even though it's the same hardware internally, uh, was stuck at 60 frames per second. Maybe it's a software issue, I don't know. But again, it's still very playable and games well. Temperatures were pretty low there, so that was fine. Going over to PUBG Mobile, you could see here gaming on PUBG Mobile is also really good. Uh, being able to play at extreme um, uh, with low settings, although other devices, Snapdragon devices, can play at slightly higher settings there. But again, it's still playable and you can get your 60 frames per second. Now, if you guys remember on the channel, we did a video on the Red Magic 9 and we saw that could actually push it to 120. So not all devices are made equal. Now, here is the big one. We go over to Genshin Impact. And in Genshin Impact, this is where we see the major dink in armor, that GPU performance. Going for the 60 frames per second gameplay on all three devices, the devices could not play at 60 frames per second. Once you started the game, it dropped down to about the 40s, might go up to a little bit of 50s, and then you're playing for about 15 minutes or so, it really drops down to 40s immediately. Uh, so again, performance really drops here. You're not seeing that sustained uh, playability for something like Genshin Impact. Now, finally, we move over to Call of Duty Warzone. Warzone was interesting because I tried the different presets. I tried presets like, of course, for temperature, for graphical performance, and also for best gameplay. Now for best uh, gameplay performance, FPS was a little bit higher. We, get, we got closer to the 40s and 50s, while for temperature, as well as also for graphical, it pretty much stuck at 30 frames per second. Still very playable, but this is of course is where we checked our temperatures. Now, Call of Duty Warzone is good at just making things overheat. We saw that with the Red Magic uh, 9S Pro, and it's also the same here, but I will mention that Google mentioned that they have a new vapor chamber. Didn't really give too much details on it, but it does work well for this device, at least in terms of what we're doing here. Uh, I've got temperatures about 103 to 104, which is pretty good. Uh, and I think that kind of performance is something a lot of people will like to see from their gaming device. So what does this mean for you overall? Well, it means that now the Google Pixel can game. It is not up to par to say, your latest smartphones that are running Snapdragon tripsets, but it is still a good performance here to see that I can play Call of Duty Mobile, I can play PUBG Mobile, 
Genshin Impact is the biggest one where I'm having difficulty as well as also seeing some uh, slower performance on Call of Duty Warzone. But you can definitely play games on the Pixel. Now in terms of audio, I really like the speakers here. You can hear during the gameplay section. I think they're really audible and loud. But tell me what you think. Do you, would you guys pick up a Pixel to game or would you just prefer to use it for its AI features? Uh, if you would, which Pixel device would you pick? Would it be the Pro XL, the Pro or the Pixel 9? because that's also the cheaper of all three. Leave your thoughts down below, guys. I want to hear it. And don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and always enjoy your entertainment. Pixel.